You know the Paletobi heist in GTA 5 was inspired by a real life robbery? Honestly, that took me by surprise. I'm also going to share another 30 interesting facts about GTA 5 missions with you. I've already talked about more than 90 different facts, it's something I really enjoy doing. There are references and all kinds of stuff in the missions that you might miss because you're too engrossed with the main storyline and there's so much we might overlook. Before I continue, I want to say a huge thanks to everyone who supports this channel. It means a lot. It really helps me out. You have no idea. If you're not subscribed already, hit that button now. If you've already subscribed, drop a big like below. Got it? Or I'll send Franklin, Trevor and Michael after you. Right, let's get started. Let's begin with the Predator mission. This mission is where you have your first encounter with Bigfoot. You can try shooting at it, but it disappears. Here's another insight on this mission. The Predator mission is the only time in the game where you can play as four different characters. You get to play as Trevor, Michael, Franklin and Choppy. Now on to the derailed mission. One of the achievements in this mission relates to CJ. In order to get the achievement better than CJ, well it's not an actual trophy, but on the achievement list. You need to land on the train on your first try. This is also the only mission where you can drive a train, unlike the rest of the game where trains are inaccessible. During this mission Trevor seems to be kind of immortal or you could say it's a bit like cheating as you jump off the train during the cutscene and don't die but if you try this during the normal game and jump off Trevor will die which to me is kind of unfair in the pallet to be job setup mission if you try entering Los Santos as Michael the mission ends in failure but if you do it as Trevor there's no problem if you manage to win the race as Michael who's in a car which is much more difficult than winning as Trevor on a bike Michael ends up mocking Trevor at the end of the mission. Trevor storms off into his headquarters grumbling. Doing the Palito B heist mission, if you choose Peck McQuarrie, he will discuss about his background and he will mention Nico from GTA 4 and their bank heist in Liberty City. The Bank of Liberty City. Ah, shit, yeah. I heard you were part of the crew that took that down. I ran the crew. It was me, my brother Derek, God rest his soul, my pal Michael, God rest his soul, and another boy, Nico, who's probably dead too. But if you choose Norm Richards, you will see him dying in a horrible way, and we can't do anything about it. In his dying moments, he asks Michael if Michael is proud of him, since Norm's character is based off Michael. At the bank, we leave the van outside, but when we exit the bank, the van is gone, making us escape differently. This mission has the highest response in terms of police and military in the whole game, even more than the big heist, even though the amount stolen is much less. You won't fail the mission for going off route with the tractor, and oddly we won't get captured. It's weird. You can hop in the earth mover and drive anywhere you want in the game, and it won't cause any issues. Now here's a big one. The Pelletubi heist is inspired by a real-life shootout from what they wore to the intense gunfight which caused many casualties and damage. The real-life heist is the North Hollywood shootout in 1997. You can find the video on YouTube. Watch it and let me know if you notice the similarities. Of course it's not exactly the same but there are many clear resemblances. Even their weapons. They had cutting-edge weaponry for that era considering the shootout took place in 97 and the gear they wore. So they could walk around and shoot without worrying about getting shot. In the covert mission, we have to boost a car from a special agent named JB700. If you didn't catch the reference, JB is short for James Bond and 700 would be 007 backwards. So this mission is clearly a nod to James Bond movies. Another note on this mission is that typically when we arrive at this mission, we knock out an actor and impersonate him to steal the car. However, it's not necessary because we can actually just grab any vehicle or just walk straight in, thieve the car and get out of there. The mission is definitely more challenging this way considering there are a lot of guards at the studio, but it's an option. And then in another mission, though our character Franklin is featured, we don't actually play as him at all. Trevor even throws a jab at Franklin for choosing the easy route. It's only in this mission that we find out Trevor had hurt Martin Madrazo's ear. He never mentioned this to Michael when he was showing off the kidnapped Patricia in his car. Trevor simply said they had a dispute and now we learn he actually cut off Madrazo's ear. What a wild dude. Now, in the mission called Water Under the Bridge, the game creators Rockstar were clearly hit and miss. In this mission, Rockstar failed to show the passing of time in the city setting. It's still exactly the same, and the population sign hasn't even changed. But another thing cool about this mission is that it offers two completely different paths, depending on how you play the game. One is focused on Michael's storyline, 
detailing why he had to make a deal to try and save his family from the lifestyle he was living. As a result, you might sympathize with him more and perhaps feel that Michael's decision wasn't so much a betrayal, but a necessary evil. Listen, Amanda, we're going to move to Los Santos, start over. I made a deal. The slate will be totally wiped clean. Whoa! Hey, everybody pays attention, no one gets hurt! Trust me, darling, look at me. Amanda, it was the only thing I could do. Either everyone dies, or one guy gets out. I'm that guy. Slow and steady, team. Slow and steady. His name is Dave Norton, nice guy, realist. He gets the glory, I get out. It's not even a decision. Amanda, I don't have a choice. Do you want to die here where it's always snowing? Or do you want to go and live where it's always sunny? All right. You want to live? Tell me you want to live. Work this out. Work this out. Some depot out of town you don't need to know. Trust me. Nothing is going to go wrong. Nothing. Yeah, I hear you. We got to follow the plan. Everything will work out. I did the deal, Amanda. It's over. Baby, we get out. Be happy. Be normal. It ain't supposed to go down like this. We did it. Baby, we are home free. It's over. This is fucked, man. The thing is blown. Just this one job and everything is done. Everything is done. However, if you start the mission as Trevor, the storyline feels more like a straightforward betrayal. You see how angry Trevor is about what Michael did. All he wants to know is if Michael was a total traitor and faked his own death, which is why their mutual friend Brad is in the grave instead of Michael. This implies that from the start, Michael knew something was going down or he even planned it. So how you interpret this mission can vary greatly. In one perspective, you might believe that Michael should be pardoned for his actions, and from the other, you might think Michael should die just like he was left to die in the mission Fresh Meat. Another important note about this mission is the fact that even after nine years, Brad's remains are still recognizable. It's more than likely because the burial place is in a very cold climate, slowing down the decomposition process. There are actually places in the world where that happens, and so, in these freezing villages, they don't allow burials of people who died of diseases. I think I read about a Norwegian village that had to disinter some bodies and rebury them in a different town because they still had traces of the Spanish flu. The last thing about this mission is that the town of North Yankton seems pretty unfinished. A lot is missing, and I believe that might be due to the initial release of GTA 5 needing more disk space. Truth be told, they faced some significant storage constraints. I believe this was a huge issue, particularly with Xbox 360. To play the game as it was initially released, players needed one CD plus a flash drive. This clearly indicates that they probably lacked enough space, which is why the city seems incomplete. If you deviate from the mission path at any point, the mission will fail. During the Fresh Meat mission, if you flee the mission area without killing the remaining Triad members, the game may freeze and require a restart. I'm not sure why this happened. You can shoot the triad member who's standing next to Michael into the meat grinder and he'll scream a lot even if he's been shot in the head. It's kind of a glitch. This mission is also one of the most brutal in the game with various types of gruesome deaths like people falling into meat grinders, hot oil, and I think acid too, among other things. It's definitely a unique mission. In the Reuniting the Family mission, you need to pick up three people, Jimmy, Tracy, and Amanda, and if you use totally random vehicles like a garbage truck, they'll just get in without any concern for the vehicle. They won't comment on it, but it ends up looking pretty funny. In this mission, we also find out that Amanda has been with a lot of people and basically everyone knew about it. The tennis instructor, the yoga teacher, Jimmy's tutor, the psychologist, and the proctologist, among others. I started to understand something in there. No one else gets this family. Not Dr. Friedlander, or my yoga teacher, or our tennis coach, or the juice guy, or the dog walker. Oh, or, hey, hey. Or Jimmy's third grade teacher. Or the trash guy. Or dad's proctologist. Or the guy that thinks he's Jesus on Vespucci Beach. Or the hippie bum who thinks the world is ending. From the moment the session begins in Dr. Friedlander's office, 
We don't hear him say a single word. The whole argument takes place between Amanda and Michael, and the only time the doctor speaks is when he announces that the session is over and will cost four times the normal rate. I've also heard that after this mission on the radio show Fame or Shame, Leslie says that the three contestants are some of the best, but the judges don't agree. So Leslie then pleads live on air for Michael not to kill him. I couldn't find this audio, but I wish I had, so I could share it with you guys. It would be incredible. In the Meltdown mission, we find out that Michael's house is the only one with interior destruction textures, probably because of this mission. There's a huge mess inside, and it's impossible for the house not to get at least a little damage during this all-out war. After the mission, you can call Devin and talk about it, and he basically blames Molly, saying that since Michael went after the women, Devin went after them too. Check it out. Hey, you missed the show, buddy. Trouble at home? You came for my family, asshole? Oh, I thought going after women was fair game. Molly died in an accident while following your orders, and I'm sorry for that, okay? Well, accidents happen, don't they? Hey, send your private army after me if you have to, pal. I won't be hiding. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Until the next video, take care and bye.